Welcome to the Admin Theater. This is one of my favorite places in the whole Dreamforce campus. I'm so glad you're here with me. I'm really excited to talk about this topic. I learned this year how easy it is to configure custom domains for Experience Cloud sites, and now I want to spread the good word across the entire ecosystem that you can do this too. So let's go. No doubt you've seen this slide before. Just a reminder, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make purchasing decisions based on currently available technology. Everything we talk about today I think is currently available because I set it up myself. So you have a lot of options about where to be during Dreamforce, and I'm really honored and grateful that you chose to come here to this session. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being admins. We make this world go round, so keep on rocking. All right. Who recognizes this look of fear and frustration and like outright anxiety? This is how I felt last spring when I was worried and I was fretting about how enhanced domains were going to affect my org, especially because we have external users in Experience Cloud, and I knew that our internal domain name was going to be exposed to them, and it wasn't going to make any sense to them. And they were going to, not only that, but all of the URLs that we had been using were going to change. And so I was terrified. Luckily, with the help of my Trailblazer community, thank you, big shout out to MVP Office Hours and to Andrew Russo, I learned that you can set up what's called a custom domain that's going to make it simpler for your ex um, experienced cloud users to find your site, and I want to tell you how to do that. We're going to go through three ways. We want to make sure we're all on the same page by starting with a few domain name basics. So what is a domain name? I'm going to show you an example configuration, and then I'm going to finally leave you with ways the next steps for you to take when you go home to implement this in your own org. If we haven't met, my name is Sarah Pilzer. I am the Director of Technology at the Country Dance and Song Society. We are a participatory arts nonprofit. Um, my pronouns are she, her, or they, them, and I love connecting with other trailblazers. So please come find me after the session or find me on LinkedIn and we'll chat. All right. So, I'm going to go through a lot of terms. A lot of these words are going to come up during um, my presentation. I'm not going to be able to have time to define them all. And so I've made a resource post, post that has more um, in-depth definition about these. What's good is you don't need to know what these mean in order to configure your custom domains. It's helpful, but you can do it even without understanding anything up here. And I'll, I'll explain some of them as we go along. All right. So before we get started, how many of you are using Experience Cloud today? Great. So there's like an infinite possibility of, of sites you can build. You can build customer service, uh, partner portals, lots of ways to uh, share your Salesforce data with external users. Here are a few ways that we use it at my organization. We've built a fundraising portal for donors and members to give us money to support the good work we're doing. We've created a directory where people can find events that are close to them, hosted by local groups. And we've even set up a storefront where people can buy music books and CDs of the traditions that we um, steward. So this is just an example of why you might have an experienced cloud site, especially as a nonprofit. But um, the question is, why would you want to use a custom domain? Well, as I said before, if you're using the standard domain that comes with Experience Cloud, it's got this confusing my Salesforce, my force, my site part in it. And, and users, like, that doesn't make sense to them. They're like, what is this place I came? I wanted to go to your nonprofit. I didn't want to go to Salesforce. And so you can replace that with your own name that you have chosen. This allows you to brand it to your company, your organization. Furthermore, you can use a different name for your external users, so that my domain, the CDSS office one that we have internally, is different than the one that I'm using for the external site, which is commons.cdss.org. Lastly, if Salesforce decides to change things up again, and you know that they will, your custom domain is not going to change. It's going to be what you've set it to be, so consistency. All right. Let's go through an example with my favorite fictional nonprofit, the Otter Appreciation Society. Currently, they have a portal that they've set up so that people can come and support their work, find out more about otters, and it's using that standard name. In this case, I've actually built this in a sandbox. We'll get into why that happened later. So it's like even more confusing to use this name. We want to replace that with a name that we have chosen, www.ottersociety.org. Got a nice ring to it, right? So we want to do that, and I'm going to walk through how we're going to do that. 
if you go to the help documentation on um, custom domains, there's this whole pathway that leads you through like 20, 30 pages of documentation. I found this really overwhelming and very um, intimidating. But I want to break it down that there's actually only three key steps that you need to know. The first thing is you need to have a domain name. We'll talk about what that is in a minute. You need to register it. You then need to take that domain name and point it to Salesforce. You need to connect it to Salesforce. That's sort of where the bulk of this work happens. And then finally, you need to add the custom URL, www.addersociety.org, that connects the domain that you've added to Salesforce to your Experience Cloud site. So one, two, three, let's walk through these. First things first, register your domain. What is a domain name, you might be asking? Some of you might already know, but basically the internet, when the computers are talking to each other about serving websites, they're using what's called an IP address. And that's a long string of numbers and letters that humans can't understand. And so we've replaced that system with what's called a domain name, which is a human-readable name, in this case, www.ottersociety.org. Domain names are made up of three parts. Working backwards, you have your top level domain. That's going to be your .org, your .com, et cetera, et cetera. Your second level domain is the name that you've chosen. So in this case, it's the Otter Society part. Those two alone are a domain name. Second level, top level, that's a domain name. You can also add what's called a subdomain. Many of those are www, sorry, www, just three of them. Or like we saw earlier, the commons.cdss.org is your subdomain. If you have a subdomain, a second level domain, and a top level domain, that's what's called a fully qualified domain name, or an FQDN. And you need one of those in order to set up a custom domain. So in this case, we couldn't use just ottersociety.org. We have to have our www there. To get a name, you have to go to a registrar on the internet. There's a lot to choose from. These are just a few examples. And what these companies do is they say, OK, this domain now belongs to you. Sometimes the domain name you want isn't available, um, but usually you can find one that's going to work for you. Doesn't matter really which company you go. They have different pluses and minuses. Find one that works for you. All right, so once you have your domain, we're going to need to connect it to Salesforce. So we're going to add a domain in setup. This can only be done in production orgs. You can then test it in a sandbox, but you can't do it in developer orgs, which is something I ran into when I was building this. I was like, oh, I'll use my, my developer org. No, no, you can't do that. You have to go to production. So I built it in a sandbox instead. It's also only available for enterprise, performance, and unlimited editions. If you have marketing cloud engagement, you can also do it in professional. So to, to start this process, go to Setup, type in Domains, click Add a Domain. It's going to pop up a screen. And on it, you'll see this information that since you have to add what's called a C name. Again, this is one of those abbreviations that are like, what is that? A C name stands for canonical name. And basically what it is is it's an alias between the name that Salesforce gives you and the name that you have in your registrar. So you want to say, Take this name from Salesforce that's actually where the site is living and use this other domain name that I've said, and we're going to connect those two things so that they're now going to be linked. It's a standard name in Salesforce. It's going to be whatever your, your uh, custom domain name is, your org ID, followed by .live, .salesforce.com. To add a C name, you need to go to whoever you've chosen as your host or your domain register. There's going to be somewhere in there. They're all going to look different, but you're going to be able to find an advanced tools section or a domain name section. And there's going to be a place where you can add a C name to what's called your DNS. That's the domain name system, DNS. And all you need to do is say, I want to make a C name record. It's going to refer to my domain, which is www.ottersociety.org. And then what is the alias it's going to? Well, that's the name that Salesforce provided to you in that setup place. You can find that there. And it's going to be the ottersociety.org, the org ID, dot live, dot salesforce, dot com. You also have to specify a little setting called TTL, which stands for time to live. We're not going to go into the depth of that, but basically it's how long it takes data to get from the Salesforce servers to your website, to your users. You also need to choose a pathway that that information is going to travel on. This, this left side of the screen is from the help documentation. It's a very complicated flowchart. There's different ways you can do this. 
use the Salesforce CDN. What is a CDN? It's a content network, content delivery, delivery network. And what it basically means is there's data in the Salesforce data center. We want to get it to our users. Instead of just sending it directly, which takes a long time, we're going to cache that data, send it to additional servers that are closer to your users, and it's going to speed things up. Salesforce takes care of all of this for you. So I recommend using the Salesforce CDN um, option when you select what, how you're going to serve your domain. When you do that, you'll see that you actually need to add a second C name to your DNS. And this is to account for those relay servers, basically. So you want to make sure that everybody knows what your custom domain is going to be. So go ahead back into your domain name. I've added a second um, DNS name here, or a second C name. So now we have both C names, and we're ready to go move forward. The last step of adding a domain to your organization, to your um, Salesforce org, is associating it with the org that has your site in it. So here's where I'm going to say specifically, I'm in my production org setting this up, but I want to associate this domain that I'm adding to my sandbox org. So the OAS, the Otter Appreciation Society org, I'm going to associate the domain with it so that it is available, because that's where my Experience Cloud site is living, is in that OAS sandbox. So here's the complete configuration. We have our domain name, www.ottersociety.org. I've chosen it to serve it with the Salesforce Content Delivery Network. I've added my C names, and I've associated it with uh, my OAS org. There is some additional um, settings there, but really you don't need to worry about them too much. Um, this is all you need. <laughs> So once we have that set up, we've basically connected Salesforce to that custom domain, but we need one final piece, which is to say that that URL is connecting, we're connecting the domain to the site that we're going to serve with a custom URL. And we're going to add this custom URL in our org that we are doing our site in. So in this case, I've moved over to my sandbox org, and we're going to add a custom URL in that org. There's two places you can add custom URLs from, either from the domain um, names. Uh, if you go to the domain names in setup and select the domain name that you want to add the URL to, it'll give you an option to add a custom URL there. Or more simply, you can just go to the custom URLs in, sand, uh, in setup and add a new custom URL there. This configuration is dead, dead simple. So um, all you need to do is choose your new domain that is now available in Salesforce because you've done all that configuration, select the site that you want to have, you click Save, and now we have our Experience Cloud site showing up at www.ottersociety.org. That's all it took. We did that in 10 minutes. So now it's going to be your turn. Here are some things I want you to do to follow up on this. Before you even get started digging into configuration, have a conversation at your org if this is the right path for you. There are sometimes considerations about maybe why you wouldn't want to use a custom domain. There, there are going to be cases for that. So make sure that everybody on your team is on board with this before you go mucking with things. It is possible to mess it up so that your users aren't able to find your site. We actually had a few of those hiccups myself. So um, a word of caution out there that this can can cause errors that you don't want to have happen. So make sure everybody is on the same page. You can have links to both this slide deck and other resources. Um, I made a post in the admins uh, Trailblazers group on the Trailblazer community. That's what that QR code leads to, and it has links to a lot of really good information. Speaking of the Trailblazer community, if you want to know more about Experience Cloud or connect with other people building sites like this, either join the Experience Cloud or the My Domain group. And lastly, like I said, I love connecting with people. So find me on LinkedIn, Sarah Pilzer or Spilzer. Um, or if you're in the Salesforce Ohana Slack, if you don't know what that is, come talk to me afterwards. We'll get you hooked up. And lastly, I hope you've enjoyed this. But either way, if you did or you didn't, I would love to hear what you thought. Please fill out this survey. And again, as uh, Josh said, you might get an entry to win a Dreamforce Pass. That's pretty cool. So go ahead and fill that out. And with that, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this and that you learned that anybody can do custom domains, including you. Thank you.
Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comment section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admins YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.